Okay, I have a great story for you. An amazing story. A story about rain. Well, maybe the story's about Abba Maybe it's about rain. I don't know. Listen to this story. This is a great story. Rain is so important because without rain, we don't have food, we don't have bread, we don't have vegetables, we have nothing to eat without rain. Even animals wouldn't be able to exist without rain because there would be no water. We think that we have all our food from the supermarket, but really our food doesn't come from the supermarket, it comes from the ground. And nothing can grow from the ground without rain. Well, about a couple thousand years ago, in an area right near where I was standing, whenever there wasn't rain, everybody would daven for rain. They would pray so hard for rain. They would say, Hashem, please send us rain. Sometimes their tefillahs would be answered, sometimes they weren't. But there was one family, Abba Chilkia, that was his name, his family, whenever they were davening for rain, rain would always come. So one time the Chachamim were davening for rain, the rabbis were davening and davening and davening, and all the people were davening and no rain came. So they said, we have to go to Abba Chilkia, and we have to ask him to daven for rain for us. So they go, and they go to his town, and they ask around his town, where is Abba Chilkia? And they say, oh, Abba Chilkia, he works in that field over there. So... They walk to his field. They go to Abba Chilkia's field and they see he's working really hard. And they say, Abba Chilkia, we need you to daven for rain. He doesn't answer them. They ask again, Abba Chilkia, we need you to daven for rain. No answer. So Abba Chilkia, please, please help us daven for rain. He doesn't answer them. So they wait. They just wait there. Finally, the end of the day comes. Abba Chilkia takes off his jacket, puts it over one shoulder, puts his rake on the other shoulder, takes off his shoes and starts walking home. And they start following him home. What else are they going to do? He's in, we won't talk to them, but they need to follow him. So they walk and they follow him home. Abba Chilkia is walking and he takes off his shoes as he gets to a stream. Sorry, he takes off his shoes as he's walking home. When he gets to the stream, he puts his shoes on. And then he walks in the water. And the Chum turned to him and says, why is he doing that? It would make sense to take your shoes off before you go into the water. Why is he putting his shoes on when he gets into the water? It doesn't make any sense. So Abba Chilkia walks home. He gets home as he gets to his house. His wife comes out and she's dressed for a wedding. She looks beautiful, makeup on, jewelry on, a fancy dress. And she wishes him, hi, how are you? Come inside for dinner. She greets her husband, Abba Chilkia, and they say, what, who, why is she so dressed up? He's just getting home from work. She sits down to eat and the Chum walk into the house and no one offers them anything to eat. They said, that's so strange. Then they bring out food and they bring out plates for everybody for the, from the family. Abba Chilkia gets a plate, his wife gets a plate, the older son gets a plate, his younger brother gets a plate, but on the younger brother's plate, there's double the amount of food as everybody else. He's a little boy. He gets double the amount of everybody else. They don't know what's going on. As the meal ends, Abba Chilkia turns to his wife and says, Honey, clearly these rabbis here, they're here to ask us to pray. Let's go up onto the roof. We'll pray by ourselves. They'll never know that we prayed. We'll come downstairs and it'll start raining and, they'll, and we'll tell them, look, you didn't even have to come. And then they won't know. It's our prayers that get the, get the rain to come. So we'll go upstairs. Each of them takes a corner of the roof and they start praying. And a rain cloud comes over Abba Chilkia's wife and it rains over her and it's pouring rain. They come downstairs and they say, come see, you didn't even have to come. You didn't even get to ask us to pray and it already started raining. You didn't need us. B'nai Yisrael's tefillos are enough. And the Chum say, no, 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 no. We know it's your tefillos. We heard you whispering. We know what you did when you went up to the roof. You prayed, but we've got a bunch of questions we want you to answer. Sabah Chukia says, fine, ask me your questions. They say, why didn't you talk to us in the field? You made a schlep all the way over here. Why didn't you just answer us? He says, I was working for somebody else. If I would have talked to you while I was working for them, that would be stealing. I couldn't do that, so I couldn't talk to you. Okay, why'd you put the, one, your jacket over one shoulder and the rake over the other? Why didn't you put the rake on the shoulder? It would have been so much more comfortable if you had it on your jacket. I said, no, I couldn't do that. He said, the jacket's borrowed from somebody. I didn't ask him if I could put a rake on it. I asked him if I could wear it. So I couldn't do that, and I couldn't wear it too much. I couldn't wear it home, because then I'd be wearing it too much. It wasn't mine. I had to be careful of somebody else's stuff. Okay. Why, when you were walking home, you walked home barefoot? But when you got to the water, you put your shoes on. He says, when I'm walking home, I can see what's on the ground in front of me. But when I get in the water, I can't see. They said, hmm, okay. How come when we got home, your wife was dressed like she's going to a wedding, but she was really just coming home for dinner? He says, because she loves me, and she wants me to love her. So she gets dressed up every time she sees me. Wow, that's really special. He says, yeah. I says, okay, how come you didn't give us any food? He says, I would have loved to give you food, but you didn't tell me you were coming, so we didn't have any food for you, so I couldn't offer you any food. Oh, okay. I said, well, 
how come you gave your youngest son double what everybody else got? He says, because my youngest son learns Torah all day long, and Torah makes you weak, so he needs double the amount of food of everybody else. Makes sense. Okay, fine. But last question. How come your wife got the cloud of rain and not you? Why are her feel so important? He says, listen, I go and I work, and I bring the money home to her, and she goes out and she buys food. But when poor people come to the house and they ask for food, I don't give it to them. I'm not home. My wife is the one that gives it. She's the one that feeds the poor. So, of course, she's more of a tzaddeka. She's more righteous than I am. And, of course, her prayer is going to be answered. That is an amazing story. Is it about rain? Is it about Abba I don't know, but I'll tell you the lesson that I learned from the story that you should learn from this story. You ready for this lesson? If we want our tefillos answered, we have to be nice to everybody and think about everybody else. Everybody else's stuff, everybody else's. If they need something, we have to listen to other people. And then and only then will Hashem answer our tefillos. Isn't that a great story? I hope you enjoyed it.